This entitled mum doesn't understand how childcare centres work and because of her own lateness now blames the childcare worker of kidnapping her child. What crazy thing will she do next? Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamp show. Last week I was travelling for work. It had been a long two days of meetings and I was exhausted. I had just arrived at the airport for my evening cross-country flight home when I got the dreaded text from the airline saying my flight was delayed two hours due to mechanical problems. I decided to pass the time by getting something to eat. I found an airport restaurant and sat down to order. I ordered my food and pulled my phone out of my bag to catch up on email and browsed the web while waiting for my food to arrive. While I was waiting, a family with a mum, dad, little girl about five years old and a middle school age looking boy sat at a table near me. I didn't pay them much attention as I was looking at email on my phone but then I hear the little girl exclaim in a rather loud voice, look mum that lady's on her phone at the table. I then hear the mother reply, yes she shouldn't be doing that, it is rude to have a phone at the table. I glance over and the mother says to me, we have a rule that no phones are allowed at the table. My first reaction was to say something snarky as exhaustion was definitely getting the better of me but then I thought better of it and decided decided to be polite. I looked at the little girl and said, we have the same rule in my family, but since I'm here alone, I'm not being rude to anyone by looking at my phone now. At this point, the son looks like he wants to crawl under the table from embarrassment and the dad is trying to hand the mum a menu and says, it's okay, let's just order. I think that'll be the end of it, but no. The mum says, Obviously you have a family, so you know how important it is to follow rules. I would appreciate it if you would put away your phone. In a tone that a parent would use on a petulant teen. The little girl chimes in and says, Yeah, you have to put your phone away. My brother can't have his phone at the table, so you can't either. I look at the little girl and say in as sweet a tone as I can muster, Well, the great thing about being a grown-up is that I can do whatever I want. So now I'm going to keep looking at my phone and turn back to my email. The mother sighs loudly. The teen looks even more embarrassed and the dad again tries to get the mum to just order and leave me alone. The mum calls the waiter over and asks to be reseated. He begrudgingly moves back to a different table. My food arrives and I eat in peace, enjoying browsing Reddit. You might be a bit surprised but I reckon there'd be a lot of people that would feel too awkward to not do what the mum said and would just put away their phone, especially if they're a pushover or if they're non-confrontational. I bet this mum doesn't get people often pushing back so I'm really glad this person stood their ground and they just said no. I'm a grown up, I can look at my phone if I want to. So I work at a grocery store. I'm also 24 years old, but my family has chronic baby face. This is important to the story. It's my day off and I wanted to get some chores done, like clean the garage and give my dogs a bath. But I'm out of dog shampoo and the garage has a major spider infestation. So I run to the store I work at for dog shampoo and bug killer. I then pass the beer aisle and think to myself how awesome a nice beer would be after I get all my work done and pick out a couple single bottles of brands that I've been meaning to try out. Behind me, I hear someone loudly exclaim, Ahem! I look behind me and see a woman with a full cart and baby in the seat. I assume I must have been in her way as I did have earbuds in and I take a while to read the labels when I decide to try a new beer. Oh, sorry, I say moving out the way. You're not old enough to buy that are you? She scoffs. Um, yes I am. I know I look really young, I get it a lot. Don't lie to me. I have three boys, two of them are teens. I know what you kids get up to. She then points to the big killer in my cart. I bet you're getting that to get high off, aren't you? Miss, I'm old enough. It's my day off work and I'm getting some stuff done like killing spiders in my garage, giving my dogs a bath and then relaxing with a nice beer. Then show me your ID. No. Then you're lying. Lady, I don't need to show you my ID unless you're a cop or an employee here. It has my private information on there. She huffs and looks around, possibly for an employee or someone else to back her up. But no one was around, so I just leave. A few minutes later, I'm at checkout in the self-scan. And guess who I see again? EM. She glares at me again and watches as I scan the beers and then wait for the employee to clear me for it. When the employee walks up, EM loudly says, You better check his ID, he's underage! The employee just looks kinda dumbfounded at her. Um, miss, 
He works here. I know for a fact he's over 21. I sold him beer before. EM goes quiet. She probably wasn't expecting that I did, in fact, work here. She scoffs and says, Well, can't ever be too careful these days. And walks off. The employee and I have a laugh about it as she scans my ID and I pay for my stuff. I think that's the worst thing that ever happened about how I look young. I had in the past had a smoke shop employee doubt me until he saw my ID, but this was the craziest so far. Now if somebody's in a shop like that and they look too young, there are two options. They're actually underage and trying to buy a drink, or they're the right age but they just look young. In option A, it's not actually your responsibility to check. It's the store's responsibility, and they will get fined if they sell to somebody who's underage. So they have a huge incentive to make sure they check. In the second scenario, there's somebody who has every right to be there and buy the drink, but you going up to them and saying, hey, you look too young, is incredibly awkward and embarrassing for you, but also for them too. Now, unless you actually think someone's in harm's way, probably best just to mind your own business and let the business mind theirs. The backstory. So I work at a pretty big pretzel company, but for privacy reasons, I will call it Uncle Un's. Anyway, I had worked there for a year already, and this happened pretty early in my second. This particular pretzel place was inside a small amusement park in Pennsylvania, not Hershey Park. Important for later. Alright, enough lame backstory, now on to the juicy story. In the cast, me, EM, Tired Dad, not entitled, and Tired Kid. So it was the last five minutes after my shift, so I'm tired and want to go home. We were busy cleaning and not paying attention to the window, because normally most families would have left by this point. Then we hear a knock at our window. Now I'm the cashier, so I walk up to the window and say the line I always say, Hi, how can I help you today? Yeah, hi, are you closed? We closed five minutes ago. Great, do you have any leftover pretzels? Yes, we do, why? Can I have them? How many would you like? Five. All right, that comes to 2115. $4.23 a pretzel. What? They aren't discounted? If you have a season pass, it's 15% off. No, you're closed, so the pretzels should be half off. Me wanting to go home and stopped caring. And why do you think that? You're closed, so that means that the pretzels are a day old and should be discounted. We switch our pretzels every 30 minutes. Those pretzels are only 30 minutes old. Fine. Babe, do you still want them if they're full priced? No, I don't care. Hurry up so we can go home. Fine, so I can get 15% off, right? If you have a season pass, yes. No, I should get 15% off because you are closed. Ma'am, no. As you stated, we are closed, so we are no longer selling pretzels. I'm only offering them to you because my boss wants as many sold as possible. See, you can't sell them, so they are free. No, they are not. I will take them home and eat them for my dinner. I was too tired to care as I had just worked a five hour shift. I know that's not a lot, but it was 95 degrees Fahrenheit and I had to deal with kids the whole time. Plus I'm 15 and they can't have me on for much longer. You don't need them. My kids are hungry. Then buy them some food? No, they are free. For me, yes. For you, they are $4.23. Mommy, can we go home now? EM starts screaming something that no one but dogs could understand and leaves. It's not uncommon for food places like donut places, pretzel places, that once they're closed at the end of the day, they might give away some of their stuff for free, but they're under no obligation to do so. Yeah, you can always ask, there's no harm in it, but demanding it, being entitled, expecting that you should get it for free, that's not going to happen. It's also pretty common for bakeries to give away their bread at the end of the day, but that usually happens to charities and people who are in need. But even then, they're not under any obligation, it's just something that they feel that they want to do. So was it wrong for her to ask if there was any free stuff they were giving away? No. Is it wrong for her to demand it because she thinks she's entitled to it? Absolutely. At a mini club by a vacation resort, me and my team take care of about 200 to 250 children per day. The club is open from 9am to 6.30pm, with the option of having lunch with the kids. One day, around 6pm, we see the parents coming to pick up their kids. We talk with them, say goodbye until 6.30 rolls around and everyone is gone. 
I call my team to begin closing duty, and I notice that a colleague is playing with a little girl. Now it's normal for some parents to be a little late. The beach is somewhat far from the mini club. I send the other colleagues home and keep company to the child, and the other woman playing with her. After half an hour I call the beach station to ask if the mother is there, and tell her we're waiting for her. But they inform me she isn't there. 40 minutes pass, I try calling her on her phone, but the number is non-existent. She doesn't answer from her room. I contact the reception, but she didn't leave them any number. I send my colleague to look for her in the bar, at the pool, in the spa, on the playground, nothing. After an hour, my boss informs me that the club needs to be closed and suggests to me to take the child to the reception and stay there with her. After an hour and a half, the mother arrives, 6 foot 2, 220 pound woman, and starts yelling about me kidnapping her daughter. The moment she sees me, she stomps closer and yells in my face. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to admit bad words. You were going to hurt my little angel. Ma'am, please get a hold of yourself. I didn't kidnap anyone. Since you gave me a non-existent phone number and you weren't in your room or anywhere in the resort, I just brought the child here, telling half the resort to find you and tell you. More swear words. You telling me I'm a bad mother? Do you know what it means to have children? I know, therefore I'm right. And remember, I'm the one paying you. Swears I haven't even heard in the worst bars. Therefore I demand a compensation for my emotional trauma. Ma'am, quit swearing at me right now. You could have simply left me the correct phone number and none of this would have happened. I'm not obligated to take care of your daughter past closing time. This was a one-time favour and it won't happen again, since because of your behaviour, your child won't be allowed to attend the mini club again. Have a nice day. She starts yelling in a dialect about my hypothetical night job and pushes me very hard, making me fall. The child starts crying, as she's very scared, and the guy at reception, who already alerted security after the first swear word, jumps over the counter to stand between me and her. She's taken away to the hotel manager and I go to the reception to calm down. Moral of the story, she was kicked out of the resort and blacklisted by the hotel chain. At least I won't ever see her again. What's scary to think is that there's actually a child out there being raised by someone like that, and that's a little bit terrifying. Not only do people like this have no shame in their total negligence towards their child, but when the other person's actually helping them out by taking care of their child longer than they had to, rather than thanking them and apologizing for the trouble they've caused, they try and make out like somehow they're the victim and the other person has done something wrong. It's just insane. I had a job for a while where I was supposed to be the night shift quality control tech, but ended up running the entire shift because the supervisor was unreliable. He was eventually fired and I officially ran the shift for a few months before a new supervisor was hired. We'll call him E. E was drinking buddies with the owner and would often call off or show up drunk. In six months, I don't believe he ever worked a full 40 hour week. Everyone just kind of rolled with the idea that E was in charge on paper, but I was in charge in reality. E really didn't like that. He went crying to HR, and after yet another night where E showed up long enough to screw up everything and leave, HR called me in. The conversation went like this. You know you're not the boss, right? Yeah. E says the guy listens to you more than him. Hard to listen to a guy who's never here. That's a bad attitude. I'm sending you to a class on how to deal with difficult people and you're not a boss. So what do I do if E doesn't show up? You're not a boss. You do nothing. In my head. Awesome. She then issued me write-ups detailing this conversation. Two nights later, E calls off. I listened. The second shift supervisor calls me into the office to tell me what's going on and have me set the schedule. I'm not a boss. He asks me if I'm going to call the production manager. I told him to. No answer. Big surprise. And he tried calling a few other managers. No answer. Workers are coming in. What are we going to do? Don't know. I'm not a boss. The second shift supervisor set the schedule and left. 
he didn't get paid enough to deal with this either. The supervisors were the only ones with machine lock codes to fix faults. Press goes down. I'm not a boss. Hey, I need tooling only the supervisor can issue. I'm not a boss. I need paperwork not related to quality. Not a boss. Finally, my senior operator got fed up with sweeping. This is about three hours after his lathe went down on a simple error and asked me for HR's number. Now that I can definitely do. Dial nine for an outside line. He called her repeatedly for close to half an hour before she answered. He told her to get her butt up to the shop and hung up. The whole shift, at this point nothing was running, sat in QC for about an hour before she showed up. Why is nothing running? I'm not a boss. Well, where's he? Called off. Well, then you're in charge. I reached into my desk and pulled out the training slip and write-ups she gave me earlier. Not according to these. I didn't mean it like that. Then you shouldn't have wrote it like that. What will it take for you to forget that conversation? An apology. Cancel my class. And next time that alcoholic comes crying to you, tell him that we'll all start treating him like he's in charge when he starts acting like it. After the most insincere apology I have ever heard, I got everything running again and never heard anything about it again. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.